co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. This video module is going to be on the gains from international trade. Uh, we will draw on uh, our understanding of comparative advantage that we uh, introduced back in one of the very first of video modules. In that module, we talked about trade between two individuals, Fred and Harry. In this uh, module, we can talk about trade between two countries, the United States and, and China. And we can do so in terms of a, of a uh, table that looks very similar to the one uh, that we introduced with Fred and, and Harry. Here we have two countries, the United States and China. Uh, in the United States, the United States can produce 30 units of textiles. Uh, China can produce 25 units in the same amount of time or with the same amount of resources. Uh, the United States can produce uh, 90 units of beef and 25, uh, China can produce 25 uh, units of uh, beef. The United States is absolutely more productive in both, both lines of, of production, but the United States has a comparative advantage in, in one of these uh, goods. It is basically 20% a, a more productive in terms of, of textiles. It's almost three, it's three to four times as productive in, in beef. So the United States has a comparative advantage uh, in beef production. China, on the other hand, uh, is less productive in both, absolutely speaking, but it has a relatively comparative uh, advantage in textiles. The reason is that it is five-sixths as productive in textiles and it is something like five um, um, uh, eighteenths as productive in, uh, in beef. If these two countries produce uh, the, the goods in this way, that is the United States produces beef and China produces textile trade, is, can be mutually beneficial. We can see this in terms of, of cost ratios. One uh, textile to the United States is equal to three uh, of beef. And of course what that means is one beef in the uh, United States is equal to one-third uh, uh, textiles. The United States, uh, if it produces a textile, it gives up three beefs, or if it produces a beef, it gives up one-third textile. China, on the other hand, produces one textile uh, in the same, uh, with the same resources as it produces one uh, beef. And of course, the ratio is going to be the same either way you go. Uh, in this case, uh, Textile uh, beef production is less costly uh, to the United States, uh, mainly because it gives up one, uh, one third textile in order to produce a beef over here. Uh, China, on the other hand, uh, gives up um, uh, one beef uh, in order to produce a textile. Uh, China has a comparative advantage in, in textiles, uh, mainly because every time uh, the United States produces a textile, it gives up uh, three beef. Um, in China, it gives uh, to produce a textile, it gives up one, uh, one beef. Uh, if, in fact, uh, there is an exchange ratio be between these two products and these two countries, it's somewhere in between uh, one T for three B and one T for one B, then trade is mutually uh, beneficial. For example, suppose that we have trade equal to one textile is equal to two uh, beef. The United States can give up a textile, produce three beef, then come down here, take, its, uh, take two of the three beefs and get one textile. Or it can take all three beefs and get one and a half uh, textiles. It can be better off as a result of trade. Uh, China, on the other hand, can produce one textile, then turn around and take this textile uh, to produce, um, to trade for uh, two uh, beefs. Both countries can be better off both countries can have more of both uh, products. Now this can be seen graphically for the United States in terms of a graph that, that I've tried to reflect uh, the 90 units of beef that uh, the United States can produce if it concentrates its resources on beef or the 30 units of textiles that it can produce if it concentrates its, its production on, on textiles. Let's suppose that the United States uh, decides to choose this intermediate uh, position. That is, it decides to produce uh, B1 of beef and T1 of textile. That is, this is without international trade. And the trade ratio here is, again, uh, one textile is equal to uh, three 
uh, beefs. Well, if in fact the United States can trade on this ratio, that is more favorable ratio, then it's going to be enticed to move up it into the production of uh, beef. And indeed, if there's no increase in the cost of production of uh, beef, the United States can be expected to completely specialize in the production of uh, beef. Then it knows that it can take its 90 units of beef and trade them for 45 uh, units of textiles. Again, uh, at this ratio. Two divided into 90 units of beef gives you 45 units of textiles. The production function of the United States then can then extend between these two points, which means that the United States can move up toward specializing in, in beef production, then it can move down this curve in terms of trade with China. That is, it can move from a combination A uh, to a, a combination like B. That is, the United States can have more textiles as a result, and it can have uh, more uh, beef. The same demonstration could, in fact, be made uh, with uh, China. Now, here we have a case in which there is total specialization in one product. That's not likely to be the case in in a usual economy, and the reason is that in a usual economy, the production possibility curve is not a straight line. There is such a thing as increasing cost of production. And we can see this in this graph. 